Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem I'm going to be showing you how to do today. Just kind of building on related rate problems and examples. Um, so let's jump into it. The problem we have today is at noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. Ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour and ship B is sailing north at 25 kilometers per hour. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 4 o'clock p.m.? So like all the other related rates problems I've done on my channel and my website, we're going to follow the same four step process to solve this. The first of those four steps is to, to draw a sketch of what's being described in the problem. So let's start with that. So first of all, let's just think about obviously the ships are moving throughout time, but let's think about where they start. So the problem tells us at noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. So let's kind of start with that, first of all. So that's really all we're given at this point. Then it tells us how they, those ships are moving. This is obviously their position at noon. Ship A is 150 kilometers to the west. But we also know that ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour. So it's moving this direction at a rate of 35 kilometers per hour. And we also know ship B is sailing north, so it's moving this direction at a rate of 25 kilometers per hour. Right, so that's kind of how they're moving. Then what the question asks us to really look at is the distance between the ships and how fast that rate is changing at 4 o'clock p.m., which is obviously four hours later, right? We started at noon. 4 o'clock p.m. would be four hours later. So what we want to think about is at the one instant that it's asking us to measure how quickly the distance between these ships is changing, where would these ships be at that point? So what we want to do, obviously this is kind of what's going on at noon, but what we want to do is think about over the next four hours when we look at that point, where are these ships going to be and what direction are they going to be moving at that point? So let's think about if ship A is moving 35 kilometers per hour for four hours it would travel a total of 140 kilometers right just 35 times 4 would be 140 so four hours from now at 4 o'clock p.m. ship A is going to be somewhere over here right it's only going to be 10 kilometers away from where ship B is starting but at the same time ship B is also moving this direction at 25 kilometers per hour so four hours from now it's going to go 25 kilometers per hour. In four hours, it's going to go 100 kilometers. So at 4 o'clock p.m., let's think about where these two ships would be at that point. For four hours, it will have gone 100 kilometers, right? So at 4 o'clock p.m., ship B is right about here. And keep in mind, it's still moving 25 kilometers per hour. And we also know that ship A is now 140 kilometers that way. So now it's not over here anymore. Instead, ship A is now right here. And it's only 10 kilometers away from this point where ship B started. So let's keep this right there. Now it's only 10 kilometers instead of 150 kilometers. And we still wanna kinda of keep in mind, ship A is still moving at a rate of 35 kilometers per hour okay now ship B is obviously not down here anymore so we can just get rid of that so now we have something more like this right let's kind of remember this is the point where ship B started of course it's not there anymore but it's a good reference point because we know that this is going to be a right angle if we kind of keep those two paths there so what we can imagine doing is kind of creating a triangle out of this where we have a right triangle with side lengths 10 kilometers 100 kilometers and then this side we don't know obviously but this is a good drawing of what situation we've been given so this is a perfect for step one now step two of any related rates problem is going to be to come up with your equation which we are later going to find the derivative of one thing we want to think about is what we're actually looking for and remember, the question asks us to find how quickly the distance between the two ships is changing. Well, what in this picture represents the distance between the two ships? 
it's just this side length right here, right? This hypotenuse. Let's just call this Z. So Z represents the distance between the two ships. What we're looking for is how quickly that distance is changing, which would be represented by D, Z, D, T, right? The derivative of Z with respect to time. So as a result, we know that when we're coming up with our equation in the second step, we should not have any derivatives in our equation. There should not be a D anything DT. But we know that the next thing we have to do is to use implicit differentiation. So if we have a Z in our equation, when we take the derivative, we'll end up with a DZ DT somewhere. But that tells us our equation needs to have a Z in it. What we also want to think about, kind of going back to our drawing, is both of these other two sides are changing, right? As the ship B sails north, this length is going to be getting longer. And as ship A sails east, this side length is going to be getting shorter. So both of these side lengths of this triangle are changing over time. So what we want to do is kind of associate a variable to each of those sides as well. It doesn't really matter what you call those sides, but I'm just going to say this will be side Y and then this here will be X. Okay, so we have this triangle with side lengths X, Y, and Z. We needed to associate a variable to those because those sides are changing. If they were constant, we would not need to do that. But since we know they're changing, we do want to do that. Now what we want to think about is what information we know about this triangle. Obviously, we know it's a right triangle. But other than that, we don't really have any information about either of the other two angles of the triangle. However, we do know information about both of these side lengths, right? We know at this moment, at 4 o'clock p.m., y is going to be 100 kilometers and x is going to be 10 kilometers and not only that we also know about both of these side lengths rate of change we know exactly how fast both of these boats are moving right this side length is getting longer at a rate of 25 kilometers per hour and this side length is getting shorter at a rate of 35 kilometers per hour so we know these side lengths and we know those side lengths rate of change so we have all the information we could ever want about those side lengths so what we want to think about is what equation would we know about a right triangle that would relate the length of the hypotenuse with its other two side lengths. The first thing that comes to mind is probably Pythagorean theorem, which basically just says the length of the hypotenuse squared is going to be equivalent to each of the other two side lengths squared and then added together. So in this case, z squared equals x squared plus y squared. And in fact, this is actually going to be exactly the equation that we want to use because, like I said, we know everything we need to know about x, y, and also the rate of change of x and y. So therefore, those are good variables to have in your equation. And we know we have to have a z in our equation because we need to get to a dz dt eventually. So this is a perfect equation to use. Now we can go on to the third step, which is the implicit differentiation step. So in the implicit differentiation step, all we need to do is take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of our equation. So doing that, we're going to have to do chain rule because x, y, and z are all being treated as functions of time because we're taking the derivative with respect to time. So when we take the derivative of z squared, we have to treat z as a function that's being kind of trapped within the other function of something squared. So we're going to have to apply power rule and chain rule for all three of these terms derivatives. So the derivative of z squared with respect to time, using chain rule, we'll bring the two down in front. And then we'll have to multiply this by the derivative of our inside function, which is z. The derivative of z with respect to time is dz dt. Okay? And then this is going to be the same kind of process with x squared and y squared also. We're, we're going to be able to bring the 2 down in front, lower the power by 1, which is just 2x, and then multiply by the derivative of x due to the chain rule. And then... Lastly, we can do the same thing with y. So now we've done the implicit differentiation. However, there is one thing we can do to kind of simplify things a bit. Notice every single term on both sides of our equation has a 2 in it. So we could divide both sides by 2, 
and that'll simplify our equation a bit because dividing both sides by two, the two is gonna cancel there, this two and this two are gonna cancel and we're gonna be left with z dz dt equals x dx dt plus y dy dt. So now we can move on to our final step, which is solving for the desired rate of change. Remember, I said a minute ago, the thing that we're looking for is dz dt. So all we really need to do is get dz dt all by itself and then plug in the other values that we know. So it's really gonna be pretty simple. Dividing both sides by z will accomplish that. So we're gonna get dz dt equals x dx dt plus y dy dt all over z. Now what we can do is just kind of plug in all these values here, which most of them we were given. One of them is gonna be, a, we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work to figure out. But we know the value of x, dx dt, y, and dy dt, like I mentioned before. We don't know z, however. To find z, we can go back to our original equation, which was z squared equals x squared plus y squared, right? Because we know x and y. We know, kind of thinking back to our sketch that we had, at four o'clock, if this was y, this was x, we knew that y was 100 kilometers and we knew x was 10 kilometers. So to figure out z, we can just plug those in here. So z squared equals 10 squared plus 100 squared. And then we can take the square root of both sides, which will give us z equals the square root of 10,100. If we square these and then add them together, that would be 10,100. So we know this is Z, so we can replace our Z with that. And then we know X is 10, we know Y is 100. So we can replace those. And then we also know DX DT, right? Because X was this side length. We knew that this ship was sailing in this direction at a rate of 35 kilometers per hour. So in other words, we know that X is shrinking at a rate of 35 kilometers per hour. Since it's getting smaller at that rate, DX DT would be negative 35. And then we also know that this ship here was sailing in this direction at a rate of 25 kilometers per hour. So this side length would be getting longer at a rate of 25 kilometers per hour which means that dy dt, which is just the rate of change of y, would just be positive 25 because it's getting longer. So since this one was shrinking and this one's getting longer, we're gonna have a negative and a positive for those two values. So now we know all this, we can just plug all this into a calculator and simplify everything. And that'll give us that dz dt is about 21.393 kilometers per hour which is exactly the rate that the two ships are moving away from each other at four o'clock p.m. If that all made sense, drop a comment below saying you got it and uh, hope to see you back next time.